All right, hello everyone, Ajay here. In this short video, I'm going to be showing you how you can deploy your personal portfolio project to the web using Vercel. And before we do that, I'm also going to talk a little bit about what we're actually doing and how this relates to the diagram that I showed on the first day of class as well as on the second day of class between or with the interactions between the client and the server. So today we're going to be trying to deploy ultimately our website to the web. And what this essentially means is putting our website on the internet so that other people can access it, right? It's not just sitting on your computer. So again, I want you to remember um, the client server relationship and the diagram that I showed in the beginning. So what we usually have when we are trying to load a web page, so I'll kind of draw here the, um, I'll draw here a laptop. So this is a sample laptop here. And this laptop say that we are trying to load a website um, like apple.com. I think that's been one that I have used quite a bit in class. So apple.com is what we're trying to load here. Now you'll remember that we have kind of this background task that happens um, that the browser does, which it goes to DNS. So it goes to DNS to basically find the IP address of the server that our browser should be talking to, right? Because we supply something like apple.com, but the actual website could be stored on any server out there um, in the network. So we need DNS to be able to return an IP address. So this returns some IP address that then we can use uh, to actually look up our website. Right? And so we, we use the term client to denote our laptop here because client is ultimately making a request um, on the network. Right? So this, whenever now we have an IP address um, returned from DNS, we can now actually find the server with that IP address and make a request to it. So our client is then going to make a request so it's going to make a request to some server out here. So this, let's say, is our server. And this is the server that stores apple.com. And so as you learned in lecture two, when we say that we're storing like something like apple.com, well, really, the server is just storing files, right? the files that are necessary uh, to actually make the website appear on the browser. And so our server here, I'll kind of note this as server, may contain files like HTML and CSS files. So we can say that maybe our server will kind of pr um, provide a bit of a preview into the server. And so maybe we have a file here um, for HTML, and then I have another file for CSS like that. And so whenever I make a request, um, for this website, the server is then going to reply with these files. So we have here a response, and the response contains our two files. So it contains our HTML, and it also sends across the CSS or any other files that are necessary for our page to load. Right? So this is kind of the basic server-client interaction that we, that we discussed in the first lecture. And so as you have been working on your project right now, what's actually been happening is you have been loading everything locally, right? So you have your laptop here and you have been developing in VS Code. Whoops, that does, let me see if I can fix that. There we go. You have been developing in VS Code and you have been writing HTML and CSS files in, in, your, um, in your IDE. Right? So on, on, your, on your client, so client up here, locally you have been working on your uh, HTML and maybe your CSS file, right? So this is HTML and CSS. And then what you did was you double clicked on your HTML file. So you double clicked on this and then that opened up um, in the browser. But the thing is, is that this doesn't work if we want other people to be able to view our website, right? We want to be able to put it on the internet. And when we, need, and when we say put on the internet, we actually want to basically upload our files to some server somewhere that we can then, um, you know, that has some URL attached to it so that when the user or when anybody 
tries to load that URL, DNS routes it to the server, and our server is going to reply with the files for our website. Now, that sounds like a pretty daunting task. However, um, there are a lot of services that make this process far easier. And the one that we're going to be using is called Vercel. And so I'm going to write this out here. Um, we're going to be using Vercel. And Vercel is a great, a great service. So what Vercel does is Vercel has their own server. Right, so we have multiple, there might be one, there might be multiple servers here that are essentially owned and operated by Vercel. So maybe Vercel owns this server. And what happens is Vercel then allows, it kind of rents out space on its server for people to upload their websites to. And so if you are working maybe in a company and have a very large website, you might have to pay. But for very small projects, um, they have enough space where um, it can be free and you can upload your website there. So ultimately, what we want to do is we want to take the HTML and the CSS files here that we have been working on and put it onto Vercel's server. So then when en whenever anyone tries to access our website, it will be routed, um, DNS will route it to Vercel server and Vercel will then respond with the files that we upload. All right, so now that we have the background of what we're actually doing, let's go ahead and try and deploy our project to Vercel. So here I have my sample repository that was created with GitHub Classroom. So you can see that the owner is this comp 426 25s um, organization. And my website here that I'm going to try to deploy is very, very basic. I just have two elements here on my page. Of course, something like this probably wouldn't be enough for your um, personal portfolio. Make sure that in order to get full points, you check out the assignment write-up so that you know the expectations. But this is a very basic project. I think this will be a good starting point to learn how to deploy. Right? So we'll navigate back to this repository. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to essentially connect to Vercel which is the per, uh, platform that we're trying to deploy on with our GitHub um, account. So if first you want to create a new account at vercel.com. So I have done so here. And so I'm logged in. This is kind of using my um, using a new email. So this is a completely blank account. And the first thing that you'll see will be two buttons, one for connecting um, or two sections, one for importing a Git repository, and then the other one for starting with a template. But since we have a repository, we're going to try and connect to it. So we'll click continue with GitHub. What should show up here um, once um, once that happens, so the, um, the pop-up appeared on my other screen, so it didn't record, but you just log into your account if you weren't logged in, and then you should have this button. Install the GitHub application for the accounts you wish uh, to import from to continue. And so now you're going to press the install button and you'll see this pop up here. You'll see one, your personal account, and then you'll also see probably the class organization. Now, this is a very important step because I've been um, experimenting with this and I'm, I'm finding that it's actually difficult to get everything set up on the um, actual course organization because it's technically locked and you don't have full access to it. So what we're going to do is we're just going to give access to your personal um, personal account here, and it's going to basically ask which repositories to look for. So if you have a bunch of repositories or you're working on projects that you really want to keep private, there should be another option that says limit repositories, um, because in my case, I don't have any repositories. This is a completely blank account. And so I'm just going to allow all and install, but if you want to restrict, you can just press only some and then add repositories later. Okay. So press install here and it says installation completed. And so now we can go back to Vercel. You'll see that it says no Git repositories found. And the problem is, is because our repository right here is part of the class organization, not on your own account. Okay. So the step here is going to be very important. Uh, what we want to do is, since we can't really deploy from the account that's on, um, or sorry, the repository that's on this um, class organization, because we don't really have permissions, um, you know, as a student, you won't have permission to access this. We want to create what's called a fork of this repository. 
So we're going to go to this fork button and press fork right here. And you'll see um, kind of what it says. So it says a fork is a copy of a repository. Forking a repository allows you to freely experiment with changes without affecting the original project. So you can kind of think of this, like we're, we're creating, we're, all, we're almost forking or, or, or um, we are breaking the timeline, if you will. We're branching off and we're creating our own, our own new version of this project um, and we're just copying it. And by doing so, we're copying this into our personal organization. So this is my account name. And so you'll have your account name and this will allow us to actually have access to this repository and have full admin permissions over it so that we can deploy it with Vercel. So we'll keep the repository name the same and we'll press create fork. And the good thing about this, and uh, because you might be wondering that, well, if I copy this repository, but then I change it later, what's going to happen? That is okay because there's this button that says sync fork right here. And so what'll happen is you'll want to make all of your edits on the repository that's part of the class organization, okay? Not this one. So you'll be continuing to edit the one that's part of the class organization, okay? And then whenever you want to deploy new changes, you will press sync fork. And what that'll do is all of the changes that you made on your um, on the original repository will then be reflected on this one, right? So this repository really only exists for the purposing uh, for the purposes of deploying. So again, to go back here, I'll kind of uh, draw this out so that it's very clear. Um, we have two different we have two different organizations. We have the comp four twenty whoops four. 2625s organization, which is shared amongst the class, and then you have your personal organization. Your original repository existed in the class organization. So this was your like A00 a repo. And so what we did is we created a fork. So we, we created a fork of this repository into our personal account. So this is like A00 fork. And this is the one that we're ultimately going to deploy. So this is the one right here. So this will be the deployed repository. And then this repository up here is going to be your working repository. So you will do all of your work in the class repository you'll deploy only using this repository. And whenever you want to sync this up and download your changes, you will press the sync button. So we can kind of refresh and um, refresh this repository from our working one by pressing sync, like so, okay? So we typically call something like this whenever we have a personal and then we're just syncing it with something above, we often call this upstream. So you'll see that terminology used so this is our upstream repository, and we're just going to be syncing it down to this personal one. Okay. So now that we have this repository forked, we can go back, refresh our page, and you actually see this shows up here immediately. So our new repository is available for importing into Vercel. So we'll just press the import button, and um, framework a preset should be set to other. You might see other things. Um, if anything else is selected other than other, change it and press other. And that is all you should have to do. Now you just press the deploy button and this is the uh, magic with Vercel. Vercel is uh, very, very good and makes it very easy, especially for beginners to get this set up. And you can see just like that, our website is deployed on the internet. So. I can press on this image here and you can see that this website has now loaded up and there's a URL here. Um, this A00 personal portfolio, um, acsunc.vercel.app. And I actually, um, I, I, um, I, I give you the opportunity here, you can copy this URL, paste it into your browser um, at home or wherever you're watching this and you should see this website show up, right? This is live on the internet. So this uploading process allows us to, again, take the HTML and CSS that we're working on, upload it to Vercel so that any other computer can request that website 
and get that website to show up on their browser. All right, so hopefully this was relatively um, easy to follow. However, of course, there might be issues that come up, especially with setting up GitHub and all of those things. So if you have any problems, please um, attend office hours. We'll host office hours the entire week. And if you're unable to attend office hours, please reach out and we'll be able to help you. All right. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'll see you all in the next one.